good. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 97 of the This Old Knit podcast. I am your host, Nina, otherwise known as Ine on Ravelry, Instagram, and Pinterest. And you can find show notes for this episode and all previous episodes on the corresponding thread of the This Old Knit Ravelry podcast group. Um, so it's been three or four weeks. I don't really know. Um, and I was intending to do a podcast last week. It didn't work out. I had to work um, all weekend. And then this week, Joshua is actually sick right now. So he has some kind of weird stomach bug. Um, I'm not going to go into the details on that, but I may have to run off camera and take care of him. And I do have some just plain quinoa cooking for him right now that hopefully will be uh, reasonable for his stomach. So I have you perched on my yarn bucket and that hopefully will hold you, but it may mute some of the sound. Hey buddy, if you're going to come in here, you have to do something quiet because your tablet's going to be too loud for my show. Mommy. I feel like I should do one of those. Oh, oh hi. I didn't see you there. How are you? Okay. I think he's settled. At least for now. Um, a place for my coffee and not spill it everywhere um so it is raining pretty hard outside right now um we're supposed to get thunderstorms most of today and tomorrow so it's going to be indoor time for the children they're both not going to the gym with my husband today so i have them and the time that i was going to podcast is now you know there's children so we're gonna make the best of it because i do have a lot to show you down here um, so I want to go ahead and uh, dive right in. So I do not have any finished objects this week, uh, but I do have a half object. So I am working on making socks for both of the kids. My hope is to have seven pairs for each of them. Um, by the winter time, I was thinking having a couple pair for Megwin by the time she starts school. But we have a little bit less time than I thought we would for that. So I'm now just aiming for, <laughs> by the time we get to winter, I wanna make sure they have enough to get through a whole week without me having to do sock laundry. Um, I'll show you a little bit later, like when it rains really hard, the, um, our house is built into a hill. So the drainage actually goes like downhill, obviously into the woods but it makes a little stream almost on our driveway it's really cool check out how fast this water is going across and that goes down to the runoff creek that's down in the ravine here between our two properties Uh, so I was just looking at that out the window, but my lighting is a little bit weird because we just have like the um, recessed lighting here in the back and then I have my lamp here, but I have all the windows so I have natural light, but it's cloudy So I don't know. Hopefully it'll work out well enough that it's not too dark and you can see everything um, So first sock is done. I used the uh, blueberry waffle pattern. I did a 50 six stitch sock for this. Usually for Megwins I do 60, but this yarn was actually quite thick. So I would say it's on the um, the plumper end of uh, fingering weight. It is from Creatively Dyed and it's leftovers from socks that my mom made. So I don't have any idea of the colorway, but she doesn't dye anymore anyway. So you can't get it, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so here it is. So. I uh, used the blueberry waffle pattern, which I think looks really nice in this super heavily speckled yarn. It gives it just a bit of texture. They're so super soft and squishy. Like, um, I think it's a 75-25 blend, but um, since it's so plump, they feel very like um, thermal. And I think it's gonna be really nice. So 
I left just a little bit of room in the toe for Megwin's foot to grow, but um, they fit her pretty well right now. They're just kind of, you know, they fit her, but they're not stretching to fit, which socks usually you want to knit some negative V's in, into them. So the foot is fitting without stretching to fit. So I think they will last all through um, the fall and the winter. So sock number one, I think I might turn this lamp off. See how that goes. No, that's worse. We're just gonna have crappy lighting, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so sock number one, and uh, I have cast on for sock number two. So I just have the cuff going right now. I'm participating in the Saturday Sockathon that um, the Hey Sister Yarn Co. girls are doing. And um, they have the Hey Sister podcast as well. So Rachel and Tabby are every Saturday knitting socks for a little while and they're using the hashtag Saturday Sockathon on Instagram. So I'm using that as a motivator to at least take a little bit of time each Saturday to knit some on socks because if I don't knit on them, I will never get anything done. Um, and it's so far it's working. Cause I'm not really, I'm still not feeling the sock mojo, especially for me, but I do know that the kids and Josh need more socks. This is what I have left of the ball. Should be plenty to do the second sock. And then I think I'll cast on a pair for Joshua next. Um, I, I went through all of my uh, leftovers. So I have a ton of leftovers from my socks, from other patterns. And then I had some, my first Regia um, little mini balls, but those are enough to make a pair of socks for Joshua if I use a, um, contrasting heel toe cuff yarn. So I have a lot of great choices for them. And I don't know about anybody else, but I love being able to use up all of a ball of yarn or close to all of it. And then the rest can go into um, scrap blankets. So that is number one. Number two is a new cast on that I did yesterday. And this is actually one of my pattern acquisitions as well, um, which I'll go through in a little while because apparently when I don't buy yarn, I buy patterns. So um, it's a sickness. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I am using a uh, Broco Vintage that I got from my Aunt Lynn's stash. It is just navy blue, just straight up navy blue, uh, but it's a good solid workhorse yarn and she had a ton of it. So I think I have like 15 balls of this. And that said to me, sweater quantity for Josh, my husband. Um, I'm going to go and grab the quinoa and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so that's turned off and it has to sit for a little bit anyway. Um, back to the yarn. So Broco Vintage, I'm knitting this on a size 7, I think is what I got gauge with. So I knit a gauge swatch. Um, and got gauge with a seven for me. Um, and then I'll probably knit like this. Um, so I'm making the Gramps Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. And um, basically all Tin Can Knits patterns have a very, very wide size range. So this one goes all the way from baby up to, I think 4XL or something like that. So it's a really good size range. They're really great value for the money because you just have all the math worked out for you. I can do the math, but you know, I do math all day at work and I don't need to do math for my craft. Um, so it goes up to 4XL or a 59.5 inch chest circumference. So I'm using the um, XXL, which is a 52 inch chest circumference. So that gives my husband um, some positive ease as he's working out, getting bigger, he's going to need um, room for his shoulders. So now that he's kind of lost most of the weight that he wants to lose, we figured it was probably a good time to work on a sweater for him. So I haven't done much on it yet. I basically just cast on and have done just starting the shoulder shaping. It is a top-down uh, raglan with the shawl collar and, um, sorry, a raglan cardigan. 
So yeah, not very interesting because it's navy blue and it's really tiny so you can't see anything with this little strip of knitting and my poor, poor lighting. But I am, it's cast on, I am working on it. Good wife points the cheek. The next thing is a new cast on as well. I did not get very far on this one either. It is the uh, Sipola cardigan. So I think I've shown this on previous podcasts, just my yarn. Um, but it's a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. And you're gonna, you're gonna see a theme here because she had a big sale. Um, I think it was 35% off of all of her patterns. So I bought um, basically all the ones that I wanted at hers during that sale. So this one I had already had in my library for quite a while because I bought it when it first came out. So I'm doing mine in um, Pull and Vine Yarn Strassa base for the body and a um, Malabrigo sock in, for the contrast color. So, so far all I have done is the top portion where you have your smaller needles because it's a rolled neck band. Um, so I did the very top in I think a size three needles. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a US three. And then um, I got to where I need to switch to a five based on my swatching. Um, but I'm using my fives on the sleeve for my spike. So until I finish the second sleeve, I can't do this, which is actually good because otherwise I'd just start doing this and I wouldn't do my second sleeve and I'm really close to being done. So colors are not going to show up at all. It's a very pretty deep eggplant color and a mauvey pink called Jilted Rose. So those two together. This has been in my stash for a really long time. Kristen hasn't even carried that base in years and it's her old tag. So stash or shelf challenge, win-win. And this one has been in my stash since at least 2007. Cause it was a going away present from my friends from California. So that's that. And then my last whip that I have been working on is my Zweig. Um, so this is a pattern also by Caitlin Hunter or Boyland Networks. Um, I'm sure that most of you have seen it. It is a pretty um, popular pattern going around right now and with good reason, it is a very Good pattern. It's a very well written pattern. I didn't print out the front page that has the picture of it, but that's okay because I'm most of the way done with it so you can see mine. Um, so I have completed the first sleeve and I am working on the second sleeve. So I am about halfway on that second sleeve. Let's say a little more than halfway. I have seven instances of the, uh, the cable cross left to do and then the cuff, which I made a pretty long cuff. I think my cuff is about three and a half inches. And while in the pattern, it has you um, knit this in such a way that it kind of mushrooms over your wrist, mine doesn't do that. So I don't know if it's that I didn't knit my cuff long enough where that would happen or what, but I actually like it on me better the way that I've knit it. Um, one interesting thing is that it doesn't have any sleeve shaping. So the sleeve is just knit as a straight tube until you get to um, the cuff. But that actually still works okay. I think because of the cables that it's kind of stretching for the top portion and then the bottom portion it's just not stretching out at all. So bringing it closer you can see that the body has all of these tiny cable X's on it. The sleeve has the same, the sleeve has the same, it has some nice ribbing on the bottom, and then it's got this lace. I have my daughter. Mm. Want to tell them about your sick belly? 
Yeah. Whoa, careful. Don't fall on that light. I don't want that light to fall on you, bud. Okay. Why don't you go lay on the couch with your tablet? And go rest your belly. Then go put it on the table, please. I don't want it on my chair. Uh, we don't have any more raspberries, bud. Do you mean cranberries? Yes. Yeah, like the dried cranberries? Yeah. How about we just, let's just wait a little bit. They have a cherry one. I don't have any more cherries. Can you go get some water? Because your belly needs water. Ooh. Maybe Sissy can get you some water. Uh, so I used an undyed hey. Reno Yak Silk Blend for Mommy. this color. Mommy, hear me. And, um. Uh, I got it from No Makers, but it was just a base that she never carried. And then the other is, I think that Lolo Did It Baby Got Yak is probably pretty close to this base. I haven't bought any yet, but it looks similar in composition. So if you wanted to try yarn like that, um, Lolo Did It Baby Got Yak. And uh, then my other color is uh, Hedgehog Fibers in the teacup colorway. So it has speckles of pink and brown with a cream background. Mommy, I probably have so I, to go to school. No, you don't have to go to school, buddy. Tomorrow? Uh, no, you have another year before you have to go to school, bud. It's, but, it, I thought oh, you were going to go to school, school when you're five. Yeah, when you're five years old. He's going to go to preschool. No, he would go to preschool this year if he was going to go. I'm just going to go to regular school. Just like you did. We didn't send you to preschool either. Kindergarten? Yeah, kindergarten. But Dice said both are going to school. Dice said Oh, yeah, yeah. When we take Sissy and drop her off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that is almost done. I should have it done next time that I podcast. Probably by the end of this weekend, but we'll see how it goes with the, uh, the child care. Okay, so um, acquisitions. All right, so I got Anasha by Jennifer Steingass. I believe that I will use my Knit Picks gloss in the pumpkin colorway for the main body and then maybe some uh, cream color on the, you know, yoke part, this, this flowery wheat kind of motif. And that Knit Picks gloss has been in my stash for a long time. So that's the first one. And then the second thing I got is I signed up for uh, the next installment of the Skandier Knits Selbu Mitten Club because I love the first one and I definitely want to knit more mittens. There's a couple of people in my family that want them for Christmas. So, um, yeah. So the first... The first installment is the Speedy Selbu Mittens. So these are knit with air and weight yarn. And I just happen to have some in my stash that will be perfect for the this pattern. I'm going to use the yarn from um, Cheryl, who is Cheryl Can on Instagram. And she is the hostess of the Caw Creations podcast. She lives on uh, Prince Edward Island. And she so generously sent me a gift when I was having a pretty rough time um, of two skeins of Fleece and Harmony. And she let me pick out the colors and sent them along. Sorry, the label's kind of coming out for one of them. And these are dyed and spun on Prince Edward Island. You can go to fleeceandharmony.com and get some, and it is amazing. So it is 100% wool, it's air and weight, and each one has 150 yards. So um, this one on the top, I believe is a rhubarb, bramble. No, this one is rhubarb. And one of these is mislabeled. So I think this one's like blackberry jam or crumble or something like that but it's like a really dark burgundy. Uh, so I think these two will be really pretty for these mittens. And I think I'll do the, uh, the darker one as the background color. And this one 
as the contrast color and then maybe I'll be able to squeeze another pair of mittens out of it going the other way and those could be a gift. Thanks bud. He brought me some fact orders. <laughs> okay, so thank you Cheryl. Um, and then the next pattern that I bought is another uh, Caitlin Hunter pattern and it is the Ora shawl. And it just has tassels all over it. It's um, a triangular shawl and it's three colors and it has tassels. And then I think she braids all of the ends and leaves that um, in the middle. So it has kind of a central braid down it. I don't know if I'll do all of these tassels, but I do really like that central braid. So don't know when I'll cast that on or what yarn I will use. I think it calls for DK weight yarn. No, it's fingering weight. Um, but you know, mood will strike. I always love having good shawl patterns. And like I said, it was the sale, so I wanted to get all the, uh, the Caitlin Hunter pattern that I had been thinking about. Then I got the Little Cabin. I believe Molly from a homespun house is knitting this one. So it is a sweater that's a pullover with uh, bobbles on it and then a lace pattern on the bottom. So it is knit out of worsted weight yarn and then it has a garter yoke. It just looks so squishy and comfy and I actually have in my stash the yarn that I'm going to use for this. It was sitting in a sweater since um, before I was pregnant with Megwin. So since 2008, it's been half knit into this sweater by Wendy Bernard. I'm never gonna finish it. If it's been languishing as a whip for 10 years, it's not, it's not getting it. So I frogged all of that yarn, washed it, um, and re-skeined it. So it's going to be this. So it calls for something with a bit of a halo. I believe it calls for a 50-50 alpaca wool blend. And this is um, the Blue Sky Surrey Merino yarn. So it is a 50-50 uh, wool alpaca blend. It's in a natural gray color. It's just so soft and, and beautiful. And I have exactly the right amount of yardage for it. Can you believe that? I maybe have like 50 extra yards. So I think it was meant to be that this has been sitting in my stash for 10 years and, and now it's ready to make its grand appearance and become this beautiful cozy sweater. So that's that. There it is. So that will be on my needles very soon because I really want to knit with this yarn now that I've washed it and uh, skeined it back up. I only had to do that with two of the skeins. The rest of them I had very loosely caked, but um, they had not been knit with. So I just left those alone and I have two skeins that are uh, re-skeined. So that's, like I said, The Little Cabin by Caitlin Hunter. And then um, this one I've had for a little bit. I think I bought it before I moved. And I had the yarn in the car to knit with it. And Walter Mittens, again by Ellie Luskane Your Knits. These were in the, um, shoot, what is it? It's the Norwegian uh, publication that they just started printing in English, but this particular issue was not in English and um, she got the rights back to publish it, so it is now published in English. So I'm going to do mine in um, a Jameson and Spindrift, like a purpley color for the background, and then I am going to use the cream color, um, shoot, that, the one from Finland. I don't know why I can't think today. Jeez, I don't know. Too many distractions? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Cream color, contrast color. And then um, Hey Rachel Makes.
from the Hey Sister podcast. Made a really, really beautiful puntilla sweater. And she did hers like the top down to here solid. And then she did stripes for the body. So I want to do the same. And I'm going to use some Bull and Vine Yarns Blitzed in the Solstice colorway for the stripes, along with uh, the two skeins that I have of uh, the Yarn at Home Mom Party Sock in the Raining Lorelei. So just a really nice pinky rose color with a very soft um, neutral kind of beige and cream color is what Solstice is. So that is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. So I bought that specifically to make a sweater like Hey Rachel makes. So you can look at her project page to see the vision. And that I already had printed. I grabbed a pile of patterns that I had printed. The next one, I didn't buy this right now, but I did buy yarn to make it. So I bought, when this got published as well, the Caitlin Hunter pattern Guthrie. So it is an all over color work sweater with, uh, I think this is brioche, but it could be false brioche for the kind of cuff and bottom ribbing. So I am going to do mine in Blacker Classic. It calls for a sport weight, I believe. It might be a light DK sport. Yeah, two colors of DK or sport weight yarn. But this is a very wooly wool, so I think maybe I can get away with, um, you know, doing it with a slightly lighter uh, yarn and it should fill in as I wash and block it. It should bloom. Um, so I got this from the Wooly Thistle. It is uh, blacker yarns and it's wool and spun classic. This is a natural fleece color gray, but I think it's the lighter gray. There's also a darker gray, so it's similar to the stripe in my t-shirt. And it's just 100% wool, so it's a mixture of quite a few British wools. It's a four ply. So I have five skeins of that. And that'll be the background color. And then um, the contrast color will be this gigantic cake of yarn that my mom gave me uh, when she was de-stashing some stuff out of her stash. So this is a ball of county, which I think is a, um, Oh, it's a Turkish yarn. I'm just saying things. Saying things that don't mean anything. What's done? Oh, yeah. I turned it off, bud. It's not mm -hmm. Nope, Denmark. It's a Danish yarn. So it's county. Um, yeah, I'll get it for you in just a minute, bud. So, as you can see, it's a rainbow. It's a very long gradient rainbows so I'm gonna do you know gray and rainbows always look good together so closer up you can't see it it's got light blue green purple red orange yellow yeah it's hard to see is that side any better a little better and I have a star I see that buddy be careful so that's gonna be my Guthrie Maggots, please. Oops, I need to put that tag back in there. Maggots. My Guthrie, not maggots. Gross, Joshua. I want you to buy maggots, Mommy. I'm not buying maggots. But can you have maggots? Do you mean magnets? Because yeah. maggots are like fly larvae. I don't think that you want that. I think you want little things that stick on the fridge and stuff. Yeah, yeah. magnets. 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 Good job. They're sticky. They're, they're sticky, that's right. They're stick on something. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, and I think everything else here is not. Yeah. I also bought some patterns from um, Mommy, you're happy Andrea like Mowry you. in her birthday sale, but I haven't printed any of them out yet. So I got, I think, the Golden Mommy, Hour. Um, like Bobbles. Mommy, it's like a new shawl pattern. And um, Mommy, Wool and Honey. I will, buddy. I'm almost done, okay? Can you be patient for a few more minutes? Why don't you go drink a little more water? I'm drinking just water. I'm mm -hmm. drinking the water. Okay. And then yarn acquisitions, besides the Blacker Yarns Classic, um, Jinx Yarns had an update that had all of her Halloween colors, and I think there are still some in her shop. Uh, but she put out a new colorway for this Halloween that's called Spoopy which is like internet speak for spooky. Um, it's a thing. So this is a self-striping yarn and it's got um, seven rows of black. Is it seven? Yeah, seven rows of black, seven rows of an orange red black variegated, seven more rows of black, and seven rows of a purple green black variegated. So it reminds me somewhat of her graffiti colorway, but with a Halloween twist. And I love her graffiti colorway and have not um, been able to snag a skein yet. So anyway, that's spoopy. And um, this came on a day that I had to work really late and I was working at home. Uh, so I literally was just sitting there cuddling the skein. And if you had smell-o-vision, it just had that really nice wooly smell because it was fresh out of the package. <laughs> so comfort. Yep. Um, and then I got a skein of the Volan Vine Yarns footsie and the if I want my if I want exposure I'll get my tits out. Um, this was for the hashtag tits out collective that was done by Countess Ablaze. I got a skein on her footsie base. She did it on footsie and she did it on blitz and I kind of wish I had got blitzed now because she's just My heart, my heart. Yeah. Anyway, it's Mommy, cool. Yeah. It's like Mommy. bright in your face, oranges yeah. and purples and yeah. pinks. Yep, tumble leaf. Okay. Mommy. Cool, buddy. Cool. Um, so this is gonna be something awesome. I don't know what. I was thinking about putting it in my comfort fade cardi. But I think I'm going to actually try to get the two skeins of Jinx yarn that I'm missing. And I want this to um, to live on its own. So, yep. There's that. And then the last, last thing I promise was my final installment of the Strange Brew Yarn Club. Also from Bull and Vine Yarns. This is on the Volca base. And it is the colorway Morgana. So I think this is gonna go into some kind of fade project. I have not decided yet if it's gonna be a shawl or a sweater. I'm kind of leaning towards the wick shawl because I have um, two other skeins that I think will go really well with it. They're both Molly Girl yarns. So one of them is on the darker side of the purple and then one is on the lighter side of the purple that uh, Kristen got for me when she was traveling in Cape Cod, I think. It's like a colorway that's dyed specifically for this one shop. Um, and it's got a lot of like whites and yellows and purples. And I think they'll just look really great together. But I am not sure if I want to just commit to putting them in a shawl because I'm kind of feeling all the feels for sweaters right now. And I feel like sweaters I get a lot of mileage out of, obviously. Um, because you can wear them by themselves and shawls I have to also have another thing to wear with them that will match them and I don't have a lot of purples in my wardrobe but anyway I don't know yet but um, this terrible lighting is not doing it justice at all it is lavenders some um, creams and then a dark plummy purple and then there's these really nice uh, chocolate browns and um, just some speckles of like orange and pink and blue up in here. It's really cool. 
So I might show this again next time when I have better lighting because this lighting just isn't doing it. So that is everything I have to share with you that is yarn related and then sewing related. I have really, really wanted to sew, but again, it just hasn't worked out. Um, my mother-in-law was visiting two weeks ago. Um, yeah. And so I didn't, that weekend I couldn't do um, any sewing. The weekend after that I worked all weekend. And then this weekend now I have sick Joshua so it may not happen. But I did take one day to start um, laying out my pattern pieces and tracing them to Swedish tracing paper for the Colette pattern Wren. So it's a v-neck kind of fold over dress. I don't know what that's called. Um, does it say? Sometimes it explains what it's called. Um, but it's one of those where like the first half of the bodice goes this way and then the other one is on top of that. Uh, if that makes sense. So it's it's designed for knits and it has two versions. It has this version with no sleeves and then the bottom version with sleeves. So I'm going to knit this version, but I'm taking the sleeves from this one to put onto this one because that will make it more versatile. Um, I'll be able to wear it a little bit longer and um, at work, then I can wear it even if I don't want to have a cardigan or something on. Um, so yeah. And the fabric that I'm going to use is from Girl Charlie Fabrics. It is this one. Um, I'm going to use this as like my wearable muslin because this is actually pretty thin. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to wear a slip under it um, just because it's pretty sheer. Uh, but it'll give me a good idea, and it was not very expensive. I think it was like somewhere between 5 and $7 for this fabric. Excuse me. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can totally see through it. See? So, yeah, there's going to have to be a slip worn under this because you can see the world through that. <laughs> but I do like the print. And I will use it to learn from, and I'm going to try to use my serger. So you can see it's just an all over floral, nice red poppies and little white daisies and stuff on a black background. So I wanna practice using my serger and I ordered a twin needle for my Janome, which I had been wanting to try to use a twin needle as well. I've never used one before. And that's specifically to get that nice double line of parallel stitching. It's actually on quite a lot of uh, commercial knits. Typically on the hem, you'll see a double line of stitching on your hem of uh, t-shirts or on the cuff. Yeah. So like, like you can really see that. Yeah, you can see it. So that double line of stitching would, would have been done with a twin needle. So that should be coming, I think, today or maybe Monday. Um, so I'll be able to do that. I've got half of the pattern pieces cut, drafted and cut out. Um, the, I did everything that was on one sheet. So the sheet that's in here, I did all the pieces. So I think I have the bodice piece, the middle skirt panel, the sleeve, and maybe one other skirt panel. Um, so I think what I have left to do is the back bodice piece and um, maybe the center panel for the skirt. And then I'll be able to lay everything out and cut it. I'm probably going to use a rotary cutter because this is freaking slippery as all get out. So I bet it's going to be there to cut. So I will use a rotary cutter. I'll let you know how it goes. Um, my serger, the thread guide for it, got bent in the move. It was put into a box by the moving company and they put a bunch of stuff on top of it. So it's actually bent like sideways. 
I have not seen online where I can purchase a replacement part for that. I've never used my serger, so it makes me pretty angry. Um, but I've put in a claim, so we'll see if they honor that and pay me back for it. And then I can take it somewhere and try to get it repaired. Um, that's pretty much all that I have to share. I've been working a lot, so we haven't really done much of anything. When my mother-in-law was here, we did take a hike in our woods behind our house. So we have woods that then um, butts up against a green space, so it can't be developed by anyone. And that just goes back really far. Um, so we hiked back there. There's a stream, there's um, like a little pool. Uh, like a fern gully. It's really cool. It's very magical and beautiful and I, I did enjoy that. And then we went to the lake that's close to our house so it's a little bit smaller of a lake um, but it was a lot of fun so we definitely will go there more but it um, you have to get a permit for it for being a resident in the city if you want to go regularly like they'll let you go one time in um, but we need to get that permit and we're just waiting to have time to go do that in City Hall. And then, um, what else did we do? Oh, we went down the street. There's a place that is like an outdoor restaurant and they have lobster rolls and ice cream. So we went and had um, lobster rolls and ice cream and that was fun and the kids enjoyed that. And there's a little pond there and there was a guy that was fishing and just throwing the fish back and they found a turtle. So it was, it was a good time. Um, but yeah, otherwise the kids have just been enjoying exploring out in the yard. They've found some toads. They've found a frog. Uh, we've seen bunnies, groundhogs, lots and lots of butterflies. There are a ton of butterflies around here. Um, and then our neighbors have kids around the same age. So there's been a lot of going back and forth between the two houses. Um, so we have the path we cut in the woods between our two houses. And then we made a little bridge that goes over the tiny runoff creek that we have there. Um, so the kids just go back and forth a lot. And uh, yeah, so it's been a lot of fun. We're trying to settle in and uh, slowly but surely we get the house a little more the way we want it. My sewing desk is a mess right now because I half cut out that thing. There's pieces of my drafted pattern on there. Um, so I'm gonna work on that today, maybe set up my sewing machine again because I haven't actually set it up since we moved in, but I have a few projects that I had in flight that I just had to throw into a box. So I have a bag that's 90% of the way done. I just have to do the stitching up and around the liner and the outside, and then it will be a usable bag. And um, I have a cocoa dress that has one sleeve completely set in and one other sleeve to set in, and then the two side seams to do. Um, so it's stupid that it's not done. <laughs> and I have those uh, llama pajama pants that I just need to re-put the waistband on. Mommy! I made them too long, so I cut that Mommy, down, and I'm gonna refold it and put new elastic in. Okay, so I need to get this little guy some quinoa, and um, so until next time, enjoy doing the things you love, and uh, keep knitting sweaters for the knit all the Rhinebeck sweaters, Cal, and for um, the knit stuff from your stash or from yourself for the Stash or Shelf Challenge. And I will talk to you soon. All right, bye bye.
for Joshua. Yeah. Ha, nice one, Dad. Well, that's literally what it is. It's a goalie of ferns. 